Hey, I'm Paul Wallen and welcome to my new video. Let's talk on how to record in FL Studio. And when I say record, I mean anything like your voice, instruments, MIDI signals like you playing keyboard or drum pads, or even tweaking and changing controllers in your project. So FL Studio would remember and record it. Yeah, there are actually several ways to do it to record anything in FL Studio 20th version. The first two of them are gonna be the easiest ones, and the other one, the third one, it's more flexible and aimed for more specific goals and you know probably you're gonna stick to this first one because it's the easiest and it's pretty straightforward and hopefully it's everything that you're ever gonna need in order to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish in FL Studio. Before we dig into explaining this recording stuff we gotta make sure that your audio and driver settings are set up correctly and you're not gonna run into any kinds of issues during your recording sessions because believe it or not you might end up having clicks and crackling in your recorded audio and if not that you may feel uncomfortable because of the huge output signal delay which for some reason is there so let's set it all up the best way possible it's not gonna take long anyway the tab that we are going to need is located over here options audio settings and we only going to focus on this input output section here this is your audio driver the thing that is responsible for driving everything smoothly in connection between your pc slash laptop and your audio interface whether it's a built-in sound card in your motherboard or professional usb firewire or thunderbolt audio interfaces if you have usb type audio interface that is not built in your motherboard or anything you've probably already downloaded and installed the corresponding software i.e audio drivers that come with it if not please do so and get back to this video if you don't have this type of audio interface and all that you have is sound card that is built in in your motherboard then please select here the FL Studio ASIO option it is going to work best for you and it is not necessarily the quality of recorded data that distinguishes those drivers types but the potential to provide the shortest possible delay between input and output signal so the thing that you're doing in your project and the thing that you're hearing out of your speakers this delay time is called buffer size in digital audio domain and it is often being measured in samples sometimes milliseconds and in short we set to the highest i mean longest value so our computer would not go nuts crackling while a project is loaded with tons and tons of heavy duty monster vsts and there's probably no more oxygen in there for the adequate sound to exist and we set it to the shortest value for us to feel you know comfortable playing midi keyboards or drum pads or also recording and hearing our own voice and it's being perfectly in sync with the instrumental track that you are probably singing to so you could perform your audio interface drivers probably could provide you with the shortest delay and we need to click on that big button to be able to manage those buffer size settings and options everything is pretty straightforward in here shortest value longest value and this one over here to the left although it's a minimum it's already pretty pretty long yeah as i've said your audio interface drivers provided if you have this usb or other types of external audio interface would give you much smaller values but it is still might be somehow comfortable to record voice and instruments into your input with this 256 samples option if you are not going to feel comfortable while hearing your recorded material with such a delay there is going to be a solution for that also be very careful if you are going to select USB audio interface drivers, there could be very short values like 8, 16, 32 samples. And if you are going to select those, be ready that for your computer it may not be just enough and it will not handle such a short delay. I gotta warn you, it's probably going to create clicks and crackling in your recorded data. You need to test some of those starting from the smallest before finding that minimal and perfect setting for your computer. I guess that's all for the setup. So let's get started with recording your input signal, which might be you singing or speaking into your mic or maybe playing an electric guitar or some other instrument that you gotta plug into your input. How to plug it in? I guess that should be the easiest thing for you on this stage. On your audio interface, you would want to find the jack or port that says input and put the cable from your mic or other instrument in there and you are good to go at that point. Obviously, FL Studio doesn't have any idea what you plug into your input, so we are going to need to guide it there. And also anything that you are going to record in your input has to be run through Mixer, precisely one of the Mixer tracks. 
So let's pull up the mixer. If you don't have the mixer open, you can just click this button or press F9 button on your typing keyboard. Basically, you gotta pick a track that will be dedicated for audio recording only. And by the way, you will be able to tell it apart from other channels so you wouldn't accidentally route some of the instruments in there. Yeah, here's how. I'm going to pick this one for recording. And the only thing that I need to do now is to choose my input option from the drop down menu up here above those effect slots. Depending on how many input slots in your audio interface you have, there will be like one, two, four, or even more of those options. You gotta know where you've connected your mic cable into. Sometimes instead of input, it might be called line one or line two, or like in this case, it's like in one and in two. But even if you don't have any idea, you can just start picking them one by one until you hear or see some signal appear in there, like, like that. that. The next important step is to switch on this red button here that is called arm recording. So the FL Studio would recognize this track as audio recording track. I suggest you just check it because, you know, the 20th version, when you have any input signal over here, it automatically switches it on like that. Now we're definitely ready to record finally. The fastest way to record in FL Studios is to just hit this red button up here. But when you first launch FL Studio, it is going to provide you with this option tab asking you what exactly do you want to record. Because you know FL Studio is not a psychic, it cannot know what you hit this button for. As I've said at the beginning, you can record not only audio in here. So that's why it asks you. Moving on, I suggest you select the option don't show me this anymore and then choose everything to record everything. Now, whenever we hit this record button, it's not gonna appear. And now, as soon as I hit it and then press play, it's just better to hit a space bar on your keyboard. FL Studio is gonna record me onto the playlist. Hey, here's how I record my audio onto the playlist, as an audio clip, by the way. Hey, here's how I record my audio onto the playlist, as an audio clip, by the way. As you can see, now this track turned bluish a bit, so that indicates that you have chosen some of the inputs in this upper menu. That is very handy, so you wouldn't like accidentally route some of your instrument track in there. You know that is this track is dedicated to recording audio. But there is an option which some of you might find handy to activate instant recording session through this command by right clicking on the record button. You may want to apply this recording starts playback option. That means as soon as you hit this record button, we don't have to hit the space bar or the play button, the recording starts instantly. This is how I record my audio. This is how it works. That's easy. Now it's even faster, but some of you may not like it, so you have this option. I think by default it's turned off. When you hit everything in this mode, it's going to record not only your audio, but whatever you tweak, switch or press in your project or on your connected MIDI device, it is going to be either automated or recorded. But it is still handy since if we are recording audio, there is a small chance that we are going to tweak or press anything in the project while recording. And I do it this way every time, it's, I don't have issues with it. But you have this option if you are intended to record only audio data, right click this red button here for data recording options and deselect other things that you're not gonna need and leave audio and clips for example. So you wouldn't be worried about other things being recorded. But whenever you need to record other things like MIDI play or tweaking controllers, you will have to go to this drop down menu and select those corresponding things. Also know that you have option to process your recorded data live while you perform a record. You are going to hear your voice with effects applied. You know something like this. I'm gonna turn them all off here by clicking this button. But you should know, the more plugins you're loading onto those slots, the longer the delay will be between you saying your stuff into your microphone and hearing it back through your speakers. It's gonna get less comfortable for you to perform or sing. You might want to use some simplest stock FL Studio plugins like Parametric EQ2, Blood Overdrive, Fruity Reverb 2 or Fruity Delay 3 for those purposes. If you did all the processing and the delay is too long and it is bothering you to hear your delayed voice while trying to focus on the beat, you might just get it off the master track clicking over here. You won't hear your input signal but FL Studio will record it anyways. And after you're done recording you can route it back in there. So you could hear it again. For obvious reasons, some people find this following way to record audio more efficient. Another way to record audio. To try it and find it out for yourself, you just go to this tools menu, tools, 
and find this line that says one click audio recording and then select this command into the playlist as an audio clip it is going to the selected last selected mixer track as the recording track and it is going to ask you to set the audio input if you don't have it done it drops down automatically i'm going to choose this one yeah and the recording started automatically so you just click once and it does everything for you almost everything you can reach this command even faster through this quick icon on the main panel here that has a picture of a microphone. When you click it, this drops down the same menu as we just saw. If you don't have this icon here, you go here, view, toolbar, edit. You're gonna edit this toolbar and the set of icons in here. And this icon is probably somewhere down here and you just need to pull it over to the main panel and then click close because it's gonna be saved anyways. Switch to the auto save by default. I'm gonna hit close here and you are done and yeah just like that we are recording just the same this way I'm gonna record my own voice onto the playlist and everything starts automatically even the countdown from the metronome awesome okay here we go some handy FL studio features that you might want to use while recording which could help you a lot before any recording starts, whether it's an audio or anything else, you want to be ready and prepared for it, right? So there is a countdown of a metronome over here. You can activate it by clicking this 3, 2, 1 icon here. Now FL Studio gives you this short time to get ready to perform. Hell, I'm gonna be ready for this thing. If you're gonna record a musical instrument and you don't have any rhythmic clues or references in your current project to play along to, like you know, drums and stuff, metronome is here to help you. Activate it by clicking this button, then set the tempo, you know, BPM selector as you need and it will take you through your performance perfectly. Ready, set, go. For the record, if you don't like this default sound of this metronome, you have an option to switch it to something else over here you can just right click at this metronome icon and choose something else hi-hat like take by default beep or cowbell try some of those out there is a very very bit handy feature in fl studio that's called loop recording you may want to use this if you're gonna need some different takes of your song part it helps you to record your voice or your instrument over and over again it's gonna be recorded every time on a different track until you will hit the right spot of your performance or maybe you might want to have a wide variety of those recording of those takes to choose from right let's try it out hit the record button you gotta you're gonna select it in a loop like that okay here we go here's the first take that I'm gonna record here's the second take and so on and on and on it's gonna be recorded each time on the new track on the new playlist track yeah, a very handy feature here in FL Studio, so you could have those things recorded on and on and on, yeah, with no end to it. However, if you want to record something short, maybe you're you saying a phrase, maybe a speech, or probably to record you playing the VST synth, but not a MIDI data as notes, you want to record, you know, it is as an audio, as a WAV file, right, straight. The easiest and fastest way would be to use Edison. It is an FL Studio built-in audio editor. Very powerful tool, by the way. And it is represented as an effect plugin over here. If you select this miscellaneous line, you will find it. Edison. That's how it looks like. You can pull it up on any of the mixer tracks. But you don't even have to look for it, you know, scrolling through those menus and lines. Obviously, there is a shortest way to pull this out. Remember this drop-down menu over here, or the one that you can reach also from here. One-click auto recording. And uh, yeah, there is an option into Edison. FL Studio does the same over here. It's automatically going to record your audio right into the Edison. It will open up on the last selected mixer track. Also, FL Studio is going to dedicate it for recordings, so it will ask you to pick your audio input in this upper menu as well. And the recording button of Edison is already going to be pressed and you are going to be recording. After that, you can just edit, cut it and uh, do some operations. You can normalize it by just pressing, you know, Ctrl plus N maybe cut something out like this apply fade ins and fade outs by clicking like alt plus f or control plus f for fade in and do any other crazy things in it then it is really really easy to save it as a wave or mp3 file audio file on your hard drive you just hit here 
save sample as and you may select any like anything that you want in here from formats and yeah i guess that's it when it comes to recording in fl studio 20 if you found this video helpful smash a like and if you are a smart guy you want to subscribe to this channel and by god do not forget to switch all notifications so you wouldn't miss any new tutorials from me in the future and on that note we are wrapping up and thanks for watching i will see you in the next video take care